Welcome to Powerful, Wild and Magical, the podcast for the female leader who wants to reconnect with her true essence, step into her divine feminine power and make a huge impact in the world. I am your host, Nadia Gargalo, and in today's episode we have Kelly Newman. Kelly is a brand and website designer, a strategist and coach. She has been on her own creative journey for over 10 years into owning her own design studio where she is working with holistic and spiritual providers to feel empowered in their branding so they can show up wholeheartedly, shine in their industry and book more dream clients. In this deep conversation, we talk about why entrepreneurs find it hard to connect with their authentic selves, how embracing who you truly are helps you break barriers, how to find your unique qualities and the importance of building an authentic brand and the essentials to build an authentic brand. This episode is full of magic, so let's dive in. Welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you here. I love the topic we are going to be discussing about embracing who you truly are. I think it's such an important thing to really embrace your essence and who you are deep inside. And thank you for being here. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm really grateful. I would like to start because I've seen over and over that female entrepreneurs struggle with embracing who they truly are and even really understanding who they truly are, uh, not being able to express themselves and building an authentic brand. So why do female entrepreneurs find it hard to connect with their authentic self? What's your thoughts on this? Yeah. So first, um, again, my name is Kaylee and I'm a brain and website designer. Um, I go by she, her pronouns and I live in Denver, Colorado. And so I have about 11 years of design experience and time and time again, within my own journey, I was finding that I was getting very lost in, you know, what we're told to be, what we're told to do. Um, and especially going into the corporate world, once I got my bachelor's degree in design, um, I worked in a very, um, masculine dominant, dominant environment and time and time again, I felt like I couldn't speak up. I felt like I couldn't be who I was. And so I think as female entrepreneurs in particular, we struggle with this, Um, being told how to be right our whole lives. We've been told that we wear the dress, that we are supposed to be more attracted to pinks and purples, and we're supposed to have our hair done and look a certain way. And this still stands very strong today. You know, there's always controversy out in the world with our physical image and how we're supposed to be and act. And that's something we're still fighting. So I think when it comes to being a business owner in particular and building your own brand, it's hard to, you know, stay true to who we are because it's, we get lost again. We get lost in what we're told we're supposed to be, how we're supposed to show up, how we're supposed to run our business. And so I think that's something I started to understand and catch on to in my own experience and my own journey. I felt like I was repressing who I was. Um, I felt like there was so much of like my feminine energy that I was putting aside when I was in corporate. And when I was finally able to break free from that and start my own business, I finally was able to come back to who I am. And so um, I know that I relate a lot to my own clients with a similar journey as well. Yeah, I can so relate to that journey because like the journey to from masculine to feminine has been definitely mine. And I do agree, like we are told how we are supposed to be so much, especially coming from this masculine society, this patriarchy, that as kids we are supposed to behave good and be quiet and be a nice girl and be a nice wife and a nice mom and don't complain and all these things that and nobody has taught us how to connect with our essence and what we truly are and even our needs so that's making us so diff for us so difficult to to really even see who we are inside because 
we don't know how to function without the labels. Yeah, exactly. And I think sometimes, you know, we are in a very forward thinking type of time, or at least we're trying to be, we're fighting for it. We have um, so many beautiful things that's like in motion, but I think sometimes we forget that it wasn't that long ago that a lot of um, female rights and um, women's rights, it wasn't that long ago that we finally started to pay attention to that more and take notice of it. And so it's still deeply rooted in a lot of us, um, generation after generation. Yeah, I so much agree. So um, how can embracing who you truly are break barriers and blocks we might face as entrepreneurs? Yeah, so really coming back into who I was um, provided such a transformational growth within my business. Um, because it also directly affected my mental health and it's why I want to share it so much is because it's coming back into like brand alignment and coming back into who you are and, uh, that brand alignment really is just aligning with who you are because we put so much of our heart and our passion and our soul into our business. I think sometimes we forget that we still have to be taking care of the person behind the business. We have to be taking care of ourselves. And so when we're focusing on the overall picture and the connection between ourselves and our business and the clients that we work with, that's kind of where the magic starts to happen. And it breaks down those barriers of you have to, um, you know, act a certain way or be a certain way and work with people you don't want to work with. Right. When we're in alignment, we're going to attract those other people that are dream clients who respect who we are as humans first. Um, and then therefore respect what we do as business owners as well. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Like to me, the way I see it is because like every day more and more we're working into vibrations and the energy and all these vibrational match and all these things. The way I see it is when we are, you are not able because of all this conditioning or labels or trying to be X, Y, Z, you are not able to connect with your true self. It's going to be difficult to attract the right people. Because if you are not being yourself and you are not vibrate, vibrating at the frequency you are supposed to as a person and in your authentic self, it's going to be difficult to attract that people. So, yeah, so juicy. So what can people do to open up and see their unique qualities when so much of the time we just see what we don't like or compare to others and it's so, so difficult to find our uniqueness or our gifts. Yeah. So there's a lot of behind the scenes work that has to happen, right? That a lot of us don't talk about. Of course, we get on social media, you're seeing all these highlight reels. Um, but what you don't see is you see all the work happening behind the scenes. So within my own journey, I have done six years of therapy and I'm pretty young. I'm only 26. So I started therapy at a very young age, which I am very grateful for. And it has taken a lot of reframing and a lot of life lessons to kind of get to where I am. And one thing that I've really found helpful for not only me, but the clients I work with is understanding who our imposter monster is, which is technically our imposter syndrome. And the reason I call it a monster is because it is something that's like with us at all times. And I think we think like, oh, we work through that. So everything's fixed, right? It's such a balancing act. And so I created this hypothetical little imposter monster. Mine is named Alfie <laughs> and Alfie is very shy and he is often nervous questioning, you know, if I'm doing something right, feeling a lot of guilt. And so it's kind of like reframing imposter syndrome and questioning who we are at the core center of our being and kind of learning how to work with it. You know, I still have thoughts every day, like even talking on this podcast, like I'm still nervous, but I have to kind of talk through that, tell myself like that imposter monster, like, Hey, we're okay. We're in a safe space. We're at home. We can talk about something we love and learning to like move forward with it and understand that, you know, flaws and all, we are still worthy of what we do. We're worthy of success and we're worthy of, um, love. I think love is a really big one because it's not only we have to love ourselves, but it's like knowing that our clients value us and they love what we do as well, because we're making a difference in their life in return 
Oh, I love that. And these things, like when we we grow and we get more confident, I say, in the business, they still come out, right? They, there are parts of parts of us that are always going to be there. So it's just something that you get to work with and understand yourself. And I love how you how you actually put names to it. <laughs> because uh, part, of, part of my, like the healing that I do and I've done in my, on myself, um, a little bit, I, I have infused different things here and there, NLP, hypnosis, but something that I worked on and I infused in my healing as well is um, IFS. So IFS is internal family systems and it treats, it treats your, you as part, different parts. So it understands that your brain uh, is holding like different personalities, your subconscious. And you actually, when you talk to the different parts of yourself that hold different emotions, experiences, traumas, you actually try to put names to them. So you kind of build a relationship <laughs> with them. And it's so, so powerful to do that because you kind of like start working with them like if they were very close to you and then you can start accepting them and talking to them, see what's happening. And it, it's such a powerful work to do. Yeah, I think it's really unique. I've never heard actually coming into that. So that's really neat. Um, the imposter monster was something I just came up with on a whim when I was trying to explain it to people. But I think that's really beautiful in like understanding those different parts of us because I agree. I think there's different parts of each of us that different people see, right? And we're such um complex and like beautiful creatures, and there's so many layers to us. Um, and our deepest desires and stuff like that. So I think that's really unique that, you know, coming into and kind of like befriending all those parts and really creating like who you are and bringing those to the forefront. Yeah, absolutely. Because we have these, let's say negative parts, but all of them try to keep you safe and do something good for you, even though they behaviors are not <laughs> the best to benefit you. But it's so important to embrace them and, and really still love them and work with them. IFS is very, very interesting because it really goes into how these different characters are, are created. And we all hold so many emotions. And like you might have to go live and feel imposter syndrome from one side. The other one is scared. The other one is excited. So we always have all these parts of us like coming together and acting and behaving together. And that is magical work. So when it comes to building an authentic brand, um, why it is important to do this work and building an authentic brand? And can you explain what an authentic brand is for you? Because a lot of people struggle with this thing of branding themselves or branding their businesses. Yeah. So I think authenticity is definitely like a buzzword that gets thrown around a lot is be this authentic brand, be the, be authentic, show up authentically. But what does that mean exactly? And so when I've thought about it and explaining it to who I work with, when you're creating a brand, rather it be strategically or visually, um, and you're creating a website and you're figuring out how, you know, you can attract more of your dream clients. It really comes back to, into understanding what works for you. So what works for me might not work for you. Right. And so for, and so forth with all of those of you listening here is we have to remember that like we are individual people. And even if you have like a business coach, I've had a couple business coaches and sometimes what works for them or what they're teaching me doesn't work for me. There are certain things that I like to do and certain things I don't like to do. So when you're thinking of building your brand and you're building um, your entire business, I want you to kind of come back and think about like, okay, who am I? And maybe like for me, Kaylee, I'm a very extroverted person. I'm very bubbly. I love to talk. I love to network. I love to talk to people in the DMs like me and you did, Nadia. And I love building connections with other people, but for like someone who's introverted, <laughs> that would be terrifying for them. And that would put them in kind of like the scarcity mode because they're panicking about having to make these connections. And so we have to figure out what feels okay with us. And like, you can create your brand in any type of way, as long as it like reflects you. So authenticity is really like 
knowing what you're comfortable with. And sometimes we can step out of like our comfort zone too. I'm not saying like, Oh, hang out in your comfort zone forever. I've pushed a couple of clients where they're like, I'm never doing video. And then all of a sudden, next thing they know, they try it and they love it. So it's okay to do some trial and error. And I think a lot of the times the idea of failure starts to come up when we're building a brand, but it's such a learning process. If you are idolizing, maybe someone out there, you're thinking of another business or another person in your industry that you love, just remember that they started exactly where you were at some point and they figured out what works for them. And so kind of understanding that process too. So as we're starting to apply this into our business and building our brand, what type of visuals really represent you as a human? If you go and look at my brand, it is very galactic. It's very magical, very spiritual. I use crystals every day in my branding. I have stars and galaxy. And a lot of people in my industry for brand and website designers usually have more minimal soft brands, but I wanted something that's bold and something that re represented me. Like even looking at, in my office right now, it's very, I have a lot of things, almost every wall in my office is covered. I like to have art everywhere. I love to be inspired. I'm a very visual person. And so bringing that into my brand feels creative and creativity is going to be so important for you because creativity is how we're going to channel how we show up. So rather that be on social media platforms, having a podcast like you do is a great way to start too. If you're more comfortable about just talking through a microphone, um, maybe you feel more comfortable just asking for referrals and meeting people that way, or maybe you're more comfortable doing daily teaching YouTube videos. So there are numerous ways that you can build your brand. You can come into who you are, um, but you do want to start with things that like make you feel comfortable and are like, oh yeah, it's kind of like that sense of relief, right? Like, oh, I can just show up as who I am and be successful. Yes, you can. You really can. I know some people like, like right now I literally just got out of the shower and it's like, I wasn't questioning like, oh my gosh, what are people going to think that my hair is wet? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm a human. It's <laughs> like my morning routine. Um, I wasn't going to wake up a lot earlier to make sure my hair was dry. Right. So it's just kind of being comfortable and like not second guessing yourself and like understanding that like people will connect with you more on that humanistic level. And that's where those authentic relationships are going to happen, right? Because you're just simply being yourself. And it's so rewarding when somebody goes and they look at your brand, they look at your website, they consume your content, and then they meet you to work with you. And it's the same person. So for me, I always tell people like your brand or your website is that initial like handshake or hug if you're a hugger or just that initial hello to show people who you are. And then, so then they don't feel surprised when they start working with you later. I love that. For me, this last year, I've been doing huge work into connecting my business with pleasure because I think it's where we really thrive. Like to be successful, you need to do the things that you love, that feel good to you. And as you said, it's nothing about not stepping out of the comfort zone. And when it comes to that, I will always say experiment with it because if you haven't, if you have never done a video, step out of the comfort zone and try. If after a while it's not for you, like I had a Facebook group last year that I was not feeling in love with after building it. And I had already like over hundred people in that, but I, I was not enjoying it. Every time I had to go live in the group, I was feeling like, oh my God, I don't want to do it. So, but I tried. So you get to try things, step out of the comfort zone, but really go with the things that feel good to you. That's so, so important. So I love that you you brought that up. And, and I love your authenticity and how you just don't care about showing up with your hair wet or how, however way you want to show up because we can feel so much pressure from what people are going to think. What are they going to say? <laughs> Well, and I have so many clients that are like, well, I can't get up and talk about my business because I don't have like my makeup done or my hair done. And, um, if that makes you feel more confident, like that's okay. You can definitely show up with your hair done and makeup. But like, if you really want to get on and talk about something that feels really important to you in that moment, people are going to listen. And most of the time they're never going to notice that you didn't do your makeup or hair, unless you say something about it. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's so true. Like, I love to, like, get a little bit of my lashes done and stuff for the podcast, but then I show up on stories at any time, you know, it doesn't yeah. matter if I'm just doing my exercise by the beach with my hair all messy or, <laughs> like, you just get to share the message whenever you feel like and there is no need to have to look nice all the time and because what matters is what you are really speaking from your heart that's yeah. going to come across. What are, according to your unique approach, the same essentials to building an authentic brand? And I know it's a lot of it is what you just told, but is there any other essential bits to building an authentic, authentic brand you would like to share? Yeah. So since I'm a designer, I want to focus a little bit on the visuals, right? And I'm so glad that you brought up um, having fun and enjoying and showing up and doing things that give you pleasure, because that's something that's really important when I'm working with my clients. I want to ensure that you have a brand that inspires you and you feel like you can show up every day and get excited to create and have fun with it too. I think We've let the idea of business being so strict and stuffy overshadow so much of like the fun aspects that business can be. And especially for those of us that are like coming from a holistic or spiritual side, um, those are the main clients I work with. Um, we're very like creative, playful souls at the end of the day. And I want you to be able to bring that into your business. So some key tips I always like to include when you're building your visuals, right, is include one of your favorite colors. And that is something that I was taught in school, like, oh, you don't do your favorite colors, but I'm like, I go against that because having your favorite color in your brand <laughs> is so fun. Like so my favorite color is purple and like I am decked out in purple almost all the time. Like my shirt right now has a purple moon on it. My oh, hair yeah. is purple. <laughs> yeah. And if you go to my brand, you'll see most of the visuals are purple and like I love the color purple. And for the longest time, I didn't incorporate it in my life. And it was so sad. <laughs> and now that I have purple back in my life, it feels good. It feels fun to show up. And I'm being able to create and play with that color in my brand and feel really confident in it because it's something that like gives me joy, gives you that pleasure type of aspect. So maybe start with your favorite color and see where it takes you. Um, and then Another thing is like brands are very complex sometimes. Like we think we have to like add everything that we are into a brand. And sometimes it's kind of dialing it back and like honing in on just one area, right? So for me, there's, um, I'm a very eclectic person, hence the name of my business, eclecticdesigns.co. And so there's a lot of different things about me. Like I love to go hiking. I love to wear yoga pants. I love to weight lift, but like, I don't really put those into my brand um, because my brand attracting like those, um, holistic and spiritual. So I put more of my holistic and spiritual side into my brand and business because those are the people I want to attract. So just be mindful. Like you can still be your authentic self, but just know that like, depending on who you want to attract, just be mindful of like what you're building visually too. Um, and most of the time you'll attract people that have the same interests as you. So if you want to attract people, um, who are, yoga instructors, right? Maybe you start posting more about your yoga routine and how yoga has helped you. Um, say, even if you're just a business coach helping yoga instructors, um, they'll come to you because they'll be able to connect with you on that level. So think about who your dream clients are um, and post more about things that they relate to and they like, and then you can already easily have a connection there. Oh, I love that. I never thought because I really talk about connection through messaging, but obviously I'm not a brand or web designer. And I love how you are taking this part of connecting with your ideal client uh, and put that into your brand because it's true. Like we do many things in life. We can like have different hobbies and different interests and it can be hard to put all your personality within your brand, but it makes yeah. a lot of sense to think about, okay, what part of me is going to connect with my ideal client? What part of me I want to show? That's a very, very good advice. So when it comes to, to the, to the pleasure that we were talking earlier, I think, I think it's just that we have been into corporate and like 
we had to be professional and we had to do the hard work and we had to be consistent and very disciplined and like compete with all these people. And then pleasure got out of the way completely. Yeah. And then we started to build business businesses from that place. But pleasure and doing the things you love is the most most powerful thing you can do in your business. And this gets me into the thing of the colors, like how crazy is that they teaching you not to use certain colors if like all colors are representative of different things. And probably something I was uh, listening to someone early, like a couple of weeks ago, and she was, uh, she's not a coach, but she was a marketing expert before Incorporate. And she was saying that when she started her coaching business, she realized that the way marketing was taught only worked for corporates, not for businesses who were heart led and making an impact because it was completely a different way of marketing. So this reminds me a little bit of that. Maybe all those things work for a corporate and use these colors or do they fit things in this more specific way. But when it comes to business that we build from our heart, there is nothing better you can do than just do whatever you love and whatever you feel. <laughs> yes. And I'm glad you brought that up because I can't agree more. I worked in corporate for three years and um, with my degree, granted, I've been working in corporate for years before that, right? Within like bigger industries, bigger businesses. And a corporate brand is very, very different compared to a small business brand because a corporate brand needs to appeal to a very, very, very large audience um, filled with numerous aspects of what that audience is, right? So they have a larger range that they need to appeal to. So a lot of the times corporate brands will be very minimal. They won't have a lot of creativity in them. They're going to use maybe one or two colors. They're going to have very simple logos. Um, a great example to think about is Apple. Um, Apple only uses one logo mark and technically their brand colors are only black and white. Um, and so the reason they do that is because they have to appeal and put their product name on so many things, right? So for a small business, we have so much more flexibility and creativity that we can really hone in on because our dream clients are a lot more narrow, right? And that comes into like brand strategy and like niching down. And I'm sure with like marketing and stuff like that, you hear that term all the time, like, oh, niche down, narrow down. But it really just is kind of giving you more guidelines of how to like sculpt and build your brand to attract those dream clients compared to trying to attract everybody. Because I know a lot of us here, maybe we've attracted people into our business to work with us. And then, you know, it's such a headache to work with them because you don't align on the same pages, values, or like process of how you do things. Yeah. And this is going back to what we were saying about the being authentic and showing who you are to attract the right people. It's the same with your branding. Like if you want mm -hmm. to attract this type of people, people who love uh, purple or pink or people who love uh, spirituality like you're not gonna show your side of weightlifting if you don't want like those people who are more like in the masculine and weightlifting and all those things so like why not using the purple to attract the people who like the purple yeah <laughs> I love that so is there any specific advice you would like to give our listeners to connect more with who they truly are and their authentic self and brand. Yeah. So just know that the process isn't going to always be easy. We're going to be doing a lot of unlearning. Like we were just talking about with like corporate and everything we were brought up to know and understand. Um, so there's going to be a lot of days that are like hard. I still have hard days and I've been running my business for about two years now, full time. Um, but before that I'd been working with clients and it's taken me a long time to figure out how to show up as myself, how to be authentic, how to find what does and doesn't work for me and just be patient with yourself and give yourself the grace and um, that self-love again to really have trial and error and just know that whatever your journey is, it's not going to look like somebody else's and that's okay. Yeah, such a good advice. Oh my God. <laughs> Patience is everything. Like I started my business four years ago. The first two years, 
were super hard. Then the next year was a bit better. And then, but I, I didn't still really connect with my true self, my authenticity. And I think this last year, 2021, and more towards the middle is when I really started to connect with my essence and who I truly wanted to be. So it's a journey. And even when it comes to niching or what you truly want or like understanding what your brand is, it's all a process of self, self-discovery. self So don't try to force it because it's just a journey of unfolding and working on yourself and understanding yourself as well, dropping the labels and the shoes. And <laughs> Yeah. And things can always change. I think that's something we forget too, is as small business owners, we worry like, oh, I, I don't, maybe I shouldn't change my business name. Maybe I shouldn't change my brand, but since we're so small, we can, we hold a lot of the power. So, um, when I'm working with my clients, we build a brand that helps you feel empowered to make those choices and to feel okay with any of your decisions with your business moving forward from that aligned place. Yeah. And As coaches, we evolve, right? Because we are always doing this work and your branding might change and it's okay to change as well. My branding's changed so many times. (laughs) (laughs) My one has changed three times already. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so before we finish, I always ask the powerful, wild and magical questions. So I would love to know what's something you are truly in love with right now in your life or your business? that is lighting your soul up? Oh, yes. So I am kind of transitioning from not only working with clients, but also into becoming the teacher. So I am going to be teaching and creating a community for other graphic and brand designers right now. Um, And that's something that's been really, really exciting. I've always, it's funny because I always wanted to be an art teacher. So it's kind of like that child in me is being fulfilled with transitioning into not only working with my clients, but also like teaching other designers how to have an approach like this and really focus on their clients in a way that's like heart centered and wholehearted. And it just feels really exciting. Like even just talking about it now, you could like see the smile on my face, but it's really magical to go from, you know, being the person that people hire to now being the person that people are learning from. Wow, that's amazing. It's so, so fulfilling and like it gives you so much happiness to fulfill something that you had, like a dream that you had even from when you were a child. I have experienced that in my life and and it's, it's absolutely beautiful. So if you guys are web brand designers, go check her out. Even if you are no brand or web designer and you are looking for someone who is heart-centered and is going to help you bring that authenticity and who you truly are into your brand, go check her out. Could you share where people can find you and if you have any offers or anything you want to share? Of course. Thank you so much. So I work with holistic and spiritual providers to really feel empowered. Like I said, with your branding and website, so you can book more dream clients and you can do that by finding me at eclecticdesigns.co. I mainly hang out on Instagram. You can also go to my website and check out my signature offer, which is the design to shine experience, which is a custom package sculpted to what your dreams and goals are as a business owner And it's really starting that journey into finding a brand that aligns with you. Fantastic. I will leave all the links in the description of the show. Thanks a lot for being here today and for all your wisdom. It was absolutely a pleasure to have you here. Uh, Nadia, I am so grateful. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of those listening and have a great rest of your day. Thanks for listening. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, please subscribe, share it, tag me and Kaylee, and share your thoughts and breakthroughs with us. I would love to connect with you. Follow me on Instagram, where you can reach me out and have a chat and find more of what I do. Thanks for being here with me today. I will see you in the next episode of Powerful, Wild, and Magical Beings.